we have the chaining part in surveying. This is the right first step in surveying where we use a chain to perform the survey. The measurements are normally taken with the chain. Here in the figure you can see a metallic chain. Now it has handles over here you can see and this is of, made of brass. Here also there is a handle and this is the tag. This is the tag. If you notice this tag has four points two, three and four. So it means that this will be at the fourth meter. At every fourth meter you will get this. Right? So meaning that at the right in the beginning from the either side of the chain you can take the chain from the left or the right it doesn't make a difference the chain is the same from both sides so you can use it from both sides so it doesn't make a difference and as we go along we'll gradually come to more details of the chaining right now we should know that there are two types of chain number one we use a metallic change that is of 30 meter and the metallic change of 20 meters. Apart from that, we have many other types of chain as well. So, I'll just go briefly through the types of chain and then we'll come back to a metallic chain which is used, mostly used rather, majority times. We perform our work in MK system, so that's why we use a metallic chain. So now we'll come to the types of chain and with of course a brief intro introduction about a metallic chain. The metallic chain has about 100 links and 150 links. It is made out of galvanized mild steel wire which is 4 mm thick and two links are interconnected with circular rings. Each formation of link has a circle at the end which is circular or oval. So there are three links, uh, three circles together, oval rings that we call. Uh, we'll go through it ahead and we normally take the measurements in meters so we use these uh, chain they are known as metallic chain and uh, they are of two types 100 meters and about 100, uh, 100 which has 100 links and 150 links and uh, as far as the different types of uh, measurement we have like uh, going in FPS and FPS system uh, we have a different chain and we'll go through them also we can uh, measure in inches acres yards etc so this is a brief intro about the types of chain and we'll go to the uh, about the chain rather we'll go to the types of chain in the next now we'll go through the parts of a chain so in the chain we have a handle here it is shown over here there are two handles at both the edges and then we have a joint this joint is attached with the handle swivel joint swivel joint means that it can be rotated about its axis and you won't have any trouble while rolling and unrolling the chain that is while using when you have to unfold it and fold it again you don't have any problem regarding the handle so it can be twisted either way so then we have tags that are put over there it's known as a tally it is provided at a one meter length then it has one 
tooth over there and of the two meter it has two teeth over there then on the third one it has three till the fourth one it has four finally at the five meter tag is a circular in nature like shown over here right and i'll show you even once again now this is in respect to a chain which is about 100 links and 20 meters the chain with a 150 link is absolutely similar so at the 5 meter we have a tag and this is in of course in reference with a 100 links or a 20 meter chain similarly we have a 30 meter chain it contains 150 links here are the tallies that we use in the chain and uh, here is the one meter one then the two one then and the three one four and the circular one as i said now at the first tally that is at the one meter tally it has one point at the two meter tally it has two points and at the three one it has three pointed edges so this is how we find the now at the five meter tag we have five meter written as well like you see in the figure once the five meter ends then again we have the one two three four meter tallies again and at every five meter we have these tags right so this is how we have the tagging system in our chains over here i have picked up a screenshot from one of my own videos and right in the beginning over here you will find a brass handle then one link of 20 centimeter the other one of 20 centimeter the third one of 20 20 and 20 making it all together a one meter of the chain so this chain has a tag which is of brass and even it has a uh, handle that is made out of brass over here right so and this is supposed to be a 20 and 30 meter chain that's a metallic chain in the first link we have the handle included as you've already seen in the previous figure and then we have one link this link comes right from the center from the center of the ring which attaches the link so in between these two links we have a another ring that attaches these two rings and this ring is flexible in nature and it can be rotated to any direction and uh, that is one of the reason that we provide a ring so that it gives you flexibility and doesn't form uh, knots on the folding and the unfolding of the chain now we here have the types of chain right so over here we have the types of chain now depending on the length of the chain we divide the chain into the different type uh, we've already read about the metallic chain in the beginning and this is the steel band it is also 30 meter in length we will go through a minor detail it has a handle and it has a thick strip which it is made of and uh, this is how it looks right and this is a different one which you can see over here uh, this is also a steel band it's made in a different form and if you look over here the chain over here it form right so this one is like a steel band 
it is a strip which is about the the length is about total 30 meters so and this is has only a chain in it with a handle at the other ends then you have a gunter's chain now this chain uh, here you can see in the figure this uh, this is a 66 fit chain right and uh, each chain uh, it has about uh, 66 links as well and that's why it's known as a 66 feet chain as well then you have a, a revenue chain so we'll just go through it now we'll go through the theoretical aspect a bit so we've gone through all these things in the beginning only then regarding the types of chain then they are in the sizes of 5 10 20 30 often we use the one which is of 20 and 30 right and tallies are provided over here in 2 meters and even at 1 meter 2 meter and 3 penny each link is of about 20 centimeter each then regarding the steel band the theory particle is about 12 mm to 16 mm the breadth of the steel band and the thickness of the steel band is about 0.3 to 0.6 mm and this chain is divided by studs and which are made of brass graduated engraved in centimeters so that is why it is a uh, steel band that is uh, in MKF system available in 20 and 30 meters it is about say 10 to uh, 12 to 16 mm in thickness then we have the gunter's chain as i said each link is about 7.92 inches each link is about 7.92 inches that is each link is about 66 feet it has 100 links so uh, why we use it because the conversion is very easy in FPS system which we normally use uh, as far as the ruler area is concerned so it is normally used in acres then we have got for long and we have miles so this gunter chain you can get the result directly then you have the engineers chain right this chain, chain is also of 100 feet length consists of uh, 60, uh, 100 links each of 1 feet so this is how we go along the gunter's chain is about 66 feet engineers chain is 100 feet then we have the then we have the next chain that is known as a revenue chain so the making of the chains are mostly similar with the, with the exception of the links so this is a 33 fit chain and it it has 16 links that means one link is equal to 2 and 1 sixth of a fit so now we have the testing of the chain so here are some of the permissible limits for testing of a chain uh, if it's 5 meter and the difference is about plus minus 3 mm so it needs to be tested so if so much is the error you have to set it right and for a 10 meter chain also 3 mm is uh, allowed tolerance level is 3 mm for far for 20 meter it is 5 mm and for a 30 meter it is plus minus 8 mm so now what happens when there is some error around so the chain is too short meaning that supposing in a 30 meter chain we we are assuming the chain to be 30 but the chain is instead it is short so why is it it is because of the bending of the links it could be because the mud is sticking 
to the uh, to the chain part or to the rings and then uh, the other situation can be that the length has increased instead of being 30 meters it is 30.71 centimeter meaning that the rings have opened that could be a reason or the rings could have been elongated instead of being circular they get elongated so these are the two conditions we have to set them right then how do we test a chain whether it is accurate it's with the help of a steel tape then number two we create a permanent test gauge right then peg the divin in the required distance that means 30 meter apart you take a chain carry it there put the both the ends on the edge of the pegs see whether the sign uh, whether the size is okay if not do the needful next is the permanent cage and this is done with the help of a dressing stone and this you can see right in the figure below so here this is the way that we do it so we have a permanent cage over there and this is of the size of a chain now what happens if we find the chain is too long if it's long the openings of the rings have to be close together elongated has to be reshaped muds has to be removed if there are any torn out or worn out rings they have to be replaced if it is found too short then those which have come down into a different direction or the diameter has got reduced in some way or the other we have to bring it to its original shape and the small rings they will be replaced with big ones or we can also insert few rings then we can also flatten the rings and bring it down to the actual shape in any case these errors are not acceptable because if you have a difference uh, more than the uh, prescribed uh, difference in our chain that means if you are going to run around 10 chains then you are going to multiply that error with it and what are the sort of errors there are some personal errors some instrumental some can be compensative and some carry on moving around the accumulative errors then what are the personal errors we don't take the reading seriously we care we don't take care of the errors and it happens along as we carry on with the work then in compensating errors in correct marking at the end of the chain fraction part of the chain is not read correctly the gradual tape not be exactly same or throughout that means we are not using a nice tape or a standard or a uh, branded tape right then there could be a sloping ground which will create error and we have got some more errors that is because of temperature and we will going through through them then there are cumulative errors this is because of bad ranging we will come to the part of ranging ahead then not keeping things straight the line is not absolutely straight the length is enormous there is temperature variation then the pull that we are going to apply to straighten the chin that could also create a difference then it's not horizontal then there is sagging and chain sagging in a chain means bending a chain if you lift up a chain the chain bends because of its own weight so that is known as sagging then we have got certain advantages and disadvantages of chaining so simplest in the common method it's easy to perform the test in the field this method in, does not involve too many complicated calculations you can straight away get the result and uh, few people can conduct the sur uh, survey then you have to follow the leader and follow the norm norms and according to that you can complete your work then the disadvantages are below the area if it's too large then there are chances of errors 
then acclimation is also a problem linkage links may fail if they are clogging or the elongation or the errors that we have discussed before that could create in wet areas it could create problems you could have sticking of the mud if the if it's a slopey ground it becomes difficult when there is a obstacle in between that means uh, we got to go along a straight line and uh, we get something some obstacle right in front so we have to stop the chaining and we have to uh, take few other steps to perform the chain in a different way and that comes under the obstacles of chaining and we'll go through it and this is all for